Okay, let's have a look, uh, look at Eric P. Dollard's premise of dielectric conductance on a non-conducting insulator. Unfortunately, my Delron rod broke, but I've got another rod here, although it's not the exact same diameter. Let's take a quick look and then talk. These magnets are free-flowing on the rod. No resistance other than wall friction. Drop it through a ring. Do you notice that? Obviously this is nothing. It's dropping the non-conductive rod through my hands for gravity. Now let's drop it through the quote-unquote conductor. Let's try that again. Notice how much slower it is? Obviously I'm getting resistance I'm bringing it up through the uh, copper rings because the bottom rod is caught in the Lorenzian force of the copper rings and it's pushing on the bottom stopper. So, obviously resistance from an upstroke is understood, but there's a dielectric inductance on a quote-unquote non-conductive material that is free-floating inside the uh, ring magnets, the neodymium iron borons, when dropped through the ring such that it's not a whole lot, but getting definite definite resistance on dropping it through this. So these are just copper rings taped together about a hundred or so of them this was my Delron rod before I broke it, right before making this video, like an idiot, unfortunately. Eric P. Dollard said an interesting thing, that uh, conductors are really insulators, and insulators are really conductors, and he talks about oil being taken out of a transformer and uh, brought over to a new, unused transformer and the oil only itself bringing dielectric uh, induction over to the new transformer once it's removed from the uh, transformer that has the charge in it the quote-unquote insulating or non-conductive uh, oil in the transformer is brought over to the new transformer therefore the dielectric uh, induction is in the quote-unquote insulator i.e. the oil the same would be true here of the plastic or Delron rod, I've tried three different rods so far. Unfortunately, my main one, which had the tightest fit, broke on me. I have to get another one. But this is a premise of uh, Eric P. Dollard's, who's not been proven wrong on anything yet, nor did I, did I expect him to be. You can see that these free-floating magnets, you should get resistance on lifting it, obviously, since the bottom magnet is caught in the Lorenzian quote-unquote force of uh, induction on raising it up through the uh, the copper rings, that's understandable, but I'm also getting a dielectric inductance in the in the uh, Teflon rod itself on dropping it through. And these magnets are free-floating on the non-conductive Teflon rod, so why would I be getting resistance and retardation it should fall at the rate of uh, what you would expect from normal gravity, but it doesn't. Don't believe me? Try this at home. There's no trickery involved here. You either use a copper pipe or copper rings like I'm using here, a non-conductive Teflon rod or several other rods work. This is a Delron rod that broke on me. It was the tightest fitting one. And of course some ring magnets got about twelve dollars of the ring magnets here. There's nothing here, there's no hidden anything, but we're looking at dielectric uh, inductance on a non-conductive material. It should free fall straight through, but it does not. And no, I'm not retarding it with my hands. Eric P. Dollar is right. Would you expect otherwise? Donate five or ten dollars, whatever you can, to Eric P. Dollar's cause. He's a brilliant genius. He's the 21st century Nikolai Tesla. 
He's an expert. As you can see, I've got a bar magnet tattooed to my hand here, and the equation that I discovered years ago, 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3. There's no such thing as polarity on a magnet. There's a misnomer. A magnet does not have poles. You have a uh, clockwise and counterclockwise spin of uh, closed loops of magnetism around a magnet, but there's no such thing as polarity on a magnet. If you look at a magnet from the top side, it's spinning clockwise. If you look at it from the other side, it's spinning counterclockwise. But if you look at it in a whole, all magnetic forces are spinning in the exact same direction. It's a spatial anomaly. It's a conceptual abstraction. From this end, the North Pole looks like it's spinning clockwise. And from the South Pole, it looks like it's spinning counterclockwise. A magnet only has one spin. Seen from one direction, it's clockwise. Seen from the other direction, it's counterclockwise. But there is only one spin, only one pole in a magnet. The notion of polarity in a magnet does not exist. As Eric Dollard states, and uh, Bill Gady states, in physics there's no such thing as poles. There's only clockwise and counterclockwise spin. Thank you, and contribute 5 or $10 to Eric P. Dollard's research. He's a genius. And coming from me, a person that hates everything, it's very rare for someone to spark my imagination on anything. Thank you.